Coming up on Tech News Today, it's a $2 billion day of news. First, Facebook drops a billion on Instagram. Then AOL grabs a billion dollars of Microsoft's dough for patents. And how the iPad might be like aspirin. Or is it more like a Walkman? Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Monday, April 9th, 2012. Tech News Today is brought to you by Gazelle, the easy way to sell or recycle your iPhones, iPads, Macs, smartphones, and other gadgets from your home or office. Don't just sell it, gazelle it. Find out how and what your gadget is worth at gazelle.com. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Aya Zachter. I'm Jason Howell. Ah, ah it's part of Jason <laughs> Howell. I'm, where am I? Extreme Jason There we go. To describe that to the audio <laughs> listeners. You were seeing just the chin just my ear, in the ear of Jason Howe. That's to the left. Uh, also joining us today from CNET.com and Rafe's Radar, Mr. Rafe Needleman. Welcome back to the show, Rafe. Good to see you guys. I know you got a busy day going on today, but we wanted to get you in to talk about Facebook buying Instagram. That's our top story today. Instagram to be acquired by Facebook for one billion dollars worth of cash and stock. Uh, and Facebook sort of bending over backwards to say hey, Instagram is not going away. We'll be working with Facebook to evolve Instagram and build the network, uh, says the CEO of Instagram, Kevin Systrom. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook blog says they want Instagram to continue independently. So that begs the question, why did they pay $1 billion for Instagram, Rafe? Well, there could be a lot of reasons. Of course, if they didn't pay $1 billion for Instagram, somebody else was going to, maybe not a billion. But Facebook is a, was a, is a growing, extremely popular mobile photo taking and sharing service. And Facebook needs that. It just desperately needs that. I mean, there are, uh, you can do photo sharing on Facebook with the mobile app right now, but it's not nearly as good as it is, uh, on Instagram. And Instagram grew in le under two years to 30 million users. Now that's a drop in the bucket compared to what Facebook has right now. It's nearly a billion users. But that, that's a fast growth, and those are very devoted, very engaged users. Facebook can't afford to let them go somewhere else. Now, Instagram uh, is obviously going to continue to be independent. They're going to continue to be used. But Facebook's going to want them for something, right? I mean, they spent a billion dollars. That's, that's more than the valuation of the New York Times right now. What, what does Facebook get out of this besides defense? I mean, I think that's, that's one good reason is to say, well, we just didn't want Google to get Instagram. But what, what's Facebook going to do if they're not going to integrate Instagram and roll it into Facebook? How does Facebook photos benefit from Instagram? Well, there are levels of integration. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, at least in the short term, it's unlikely that end users will see any difference in their Facebook app. And you'll still use Facebook on your iPhone or your Android device, and it'll look, sorry, Instagram will still look like Instagram. But where, where is your data going to be going? So you take a picture at a certain place at a certain time and you're standing next to a certain friend. Right now, the only people who have that the only person who has that information is Instagram. And all Instagram has is time and place and your social network as it is within Instagram. Once Facebook gets this information, they can extend that, uh, that data to attach it to your Facebook friends, your Facebook interest graph, uh, and all that stuff. So they now know they will have a lock on all the photographs being taken by, uh, with smartphones, except for things taken not on social services. And this just, the, the amount of information that they have here that they can use to target advertising and, uh, and offers and things like that is, is spectacular. And, and that's why some people are revolting and saying, sorry, I love Instagram, but if it's part of Facebook, I'm out. Pete yeah. Rojas of Gadget has said that on Twitter. Jenny Jardin has quit. Uh, they, they're saying, look, we just don't trust Facebook with our data. We left Facebook for that very reason. Well, it yep. seems a little premature to say I refuse to use Instagram because Facebook is buying it. When I mean no terms of service has been changed. If Facebook is going to operate Instagram independently, at least at least for some amount of time, I don't see w what's immediately different about this. That's I mean, the users are revolting and, and that's why it's because they don't know where their data is going to go. Uh, it, I agree with you. I mean, it's really early to tell, you know, what, what Facebook is going to do with this data, but it's a pretty safe bet that they're going to do something with it. 
And if people don't want their uh, their data being used by Facebook uh, and being, you know, munged into this giant uh, data set of who you are, what you like, where you've been, who you know, who you're with, why you did what you did, you know, it's, now it's that's tough. That's a tough one to, uh, to, to stomach. Although, I, you know, Instagram already knew this stuff. Uh, Facebook seems to be bending over backwards to try to be better about this stuff. I guess if you just don't forgive Facebook and you don't believe that they've changed, then you're not going to to buy into this. Some people in the chat room saying Jen, Jenny was just joking. Uh, I, I haven't found any any evidence of that didn't, on her feed. It didn't seem like a joke, at least from what I picked up from her. You know, Rafe, you kind of bring, you bring up something interesting. I mean, Facebook has... Uh, so many other things that you can do. I can check in at a location with Ayaz somewhere, say. I can't do that on Instagram. Instagram is just the picture itself, and then I can check in on Foursquare. But you could almost think of, and believe me, I don't want Instagram to change because I love the service, but let's say it evolves into something that incorporates more of what Facebook does. It almost makes it more of like a public version of Path, where I can check in somewhere with a picture, but then I can tag Ayaz on Facebook and, uh, you know, using Facebook places and there are all sorts of other f Facebook um, services that could be incorporated into something that's now just pictures. Sure. Mm -hmm. Better integration. No. Also, uh, go ahead, Rafe. No, I was just going to say we'll, we'll see. I mean, they, you, you mentioned Path, which is really interesting. I think Path is in a world of hurt right now because uh, what people use Path for, I mean, it's supposed to be this, this super uh, separate, small chance to start over again network. But Path is a great way to take a picture, put a filter on it, and share it out to Facebook. And that's what a lot of people are using it for. And I think their their big on-ramp gets uh, kind of gets some ruts put in it right now. Yeah. Also might be good news for Windows Phone users. Mary Jo Foley pointing out Microsoft owns a 1.6% stake of Facebook. Maybe they could put a little pressure on Instagram to make a Windows Phone version of the app. <laughs> yeah, one of the slides they show what, what Microsoft's missing on Windows Phone is like there was Skype was missing, which is strange as Microsoft owns that. And Instagram is a really nice target that they could get. I mean, they just came out with the Android app. Yeah, there's, there's Pandora too. They need Instagram to be somewhat relevant and uh, it, maybe they can push Facebook. Well, they're, they're putting so much money into, uh, into Windows Phone developers right now in their pockets, you know, basically bribing them to make apps, which is great. I mean, it, it lifts all boats and it makes it Windows Phone a a viable third competitor. So yeah, they they've got they need the Instagram app there. Uh, before we let you go, Rafe, uh, one last uh, comment from everybody. How long do we think CEO Kevin Systrom stays at Facebook? He owns, uh, by all reports, forty percent of Instagram. So he might be taking away four hundred million dollars worth of stock and prizes here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's quite a nice cash out, especially it might get bigger if he's part of the face. You know, if he's got some stock and Facebook's IPO mm -hmm. ends up being as big as people believe is he going to stay with facebook now that he can do whatever the heck he wants yeah uh, um well he's probably got an earn out you know he can't quit tomorrow that's not why you know facebook companies buy other companies for the product for the users and for the leadership and they make sure that leadership stays by <clears throat> incentivizing them by saying you don't get the money that we're paying you until you've done you know done your time for a little while uh but once that time is up He's the next big uh, venture capitalist or angel investor, we hope. And hopefully he'll help people build new cool apps like Instagram. Yeah. All right, Rafe, we'll let you go. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, and let folks know where they can find your work online. Just find it on CNET News right now. All this Facebook, Instagram stuff's on the front door. Excellent. Thanks, man. Thanks. On to another billion-dollar deal. Uh, AOL selling 800 patents to Microsoft. That's yeah, Billion Dollar Monday, apparently. Mm. Uh, 800 patents were transferred from AOL over to Microsoft. And the thing is, AOL still retains 300 of its patents, but Microsoft gets a non-exclusive license to that, which means Microsoft has basically a license to every patent AOL has ever had. And there's a nice chart over at uh, the Wall Street Journal, and it shows what exactly these patents were. Because the thing is, there was no disclosure as to what patents were involved in this. And they have, they have patents on online communication, browser stuff, search engine technology, multimedia, a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, in the deal, AOL also announced it was selling off stock of an AOL subsidiary at a loss. Now, All Things D says, that subsidiary, that's Netscape. So this is kind of an interesting, like, wow, this is a you know big story in the long run. This whole browser war thing could possibly, well, it's already almost not dead. It's still competitive, but the Microsoft Netscape browser war 
could end with Microsoft owning a part of Netscape because some of the intellectual property would stay at AOL. The brand name the brand specifically names, stays with The URLs, AOL. it looks like. But the underlying patents that made Netscape important, well, Microsoft could own some of that. But considering uh, Microsoft has licenses to everything, CNET was speculating that maybe this covers some MapQuest IP, which MapQuest was bought by AOL in 1999 for $1.1 $1 .1 billion. I had to, like, check that number. I had that to is crazy. Check it too. I was like, that sounded crazy, too, but apparently it was worth that. It was, it was, the, it was a big deal. Yeah, it, was it was the king of mapping then, 99. Sure. I and mean, what else did people use at that point? Oh, uh, there was Map Blast that Yahoo had. I used that, too. I don't remember that Free at Google all. Maps. <laughs> oh, the old days. Oh, wow. And uh, AOL tried to stress again, even though they just they sold off a billion dollars worth of patents, they still have 300 significant patents. They're saying, like, this is very important to them. They're going to be 300. Fine. 300. These are our patents. Patents. So, so they're not. That was my question is, if they get rid of 800 patents, and the way patent wars apparently work is the more patents you have, the less likely you are to get sued because you've got more firepower to use against opponents it's like a real war yeah are you <laughs> it's very similar are, is aol weaker now well, not necessarily it's like quality if we're going to go back to real war if you have like nuclear weapons versus like we traded in our muskets it's not necessarily a bad thing so these patents could be much more useful to somebody like microsoft and aol is probably not going to be going into the browser business anytime soon well and i think that's an interesting part of this too is it definitely is a result of the change of direction of aol mm -hmm. uh if you're if you're looking at aol as a consumer you're obviously, well, some people are still subscribed to them as an ISP, but most people don't think of them as an ISP anymore. But they are obviously getting away from being a software company, which they've dabbled in as well, especially because they own Netscape. Uh, they, are, they are going full bore towards content. Uh, and, you know, and, and so when you think of AOL in the future, you're probably not going to think of AOL. You're going to think of its properties. You're going to think of the Huffington Post, which by all accounts, Ariana Huffington is gaining more and more control of the content arm of AOL. You're going to think of TechCrunch. You're going to think of Engadget. And that, that's what AOL is becoming. Uh, and, I, and I think this is a result of that. Onward to the Lumia 900 release day yesterday. Woohoo! Big day! Yeah. Unless you actually wanted to walk into a store, oh. uh, that was really hard because it was Easter and a lot of AT&T stores were closed. Okay, so here's the deal. The right, this is a U.S. release. The Lumia yeah. 900, their big release day, and this is, you know, a big phone by all accounts. This is a phone that's got to sell well uh, to make Windows Phone kind of a viable competitor in the smartphone space. So the Lumia 900 had its big launch day, um, and it had actually an extremely successful launch on Amazon. It was Amazon's biggest gainer in cell phone sales um, uh, at one point on Sunday. It also landed at number five in bestsellers that also were sold with service plans on Sunday on Amazon Well, because they were selling it for nothing. Yeah, yeah. Today it uh, jumped to uh, number one and number two because Amazon priced it at 50 bucks with a two-year service plan. So that's a whole $50 less than AT&T's price. And if you compare it to the Droid Razor Max, which was the former number one on Amazon, it's 150 less than that phone. So price to sell... But another reason it might have done so well at Amazon was because people physically could not get it anywhere, at least in New York. Uh, the New York Times um, <laughs> had a fun little project. They decided to call all the AT&T stores within five miles of Times Square around noon on Sunday. Eighteen of those stores were not open, played an automated message saying that they were closed for Easter. And then they also had a nice little advertisement for the iPhone 4S. No mention of the Yeah, we actually, we actually had somebody write in and, and send us a little uh, video mail uh, kind of showing that off. Yeah, he, he had the uh, video of what exactly the uh, what the automated message said. It was basically just an advertisement for the iPhone. But he, uh, he also said, he wrote in and said, AT&T has crushed my will to live after being led on for four months that the stupendous and stellar features of the new Nokia flagship handset, AT&T and Nokia decided they wouldn't actually allow us to purchase the phone because it's Easter and the store is closed. Well, they could have purchased it from Amazon, but you couldn't go into a store and do it. That, yeah. yeah. So, so not only is it's obviously popular on Amazon, it's not just because it was a holiday yesterday, but the two together, I think, made for a very, very stellar launch, at least online, certainly on Amazon. Uh, analysts uh, definitely scratching their heads, though. Why, why would they make sure that the release day was on a holiday where a lot of stores would truly be closed. They must have known that ahead of time. Yeah, oddly, that also reminds me of that beta smartphone test thing that they were running. Nokia was running this ad. And the, the date ended, there's a countdown clock on it, and it ended on the Friday, on the 6th, mm -hmm. before, before Easter. So if their countdown was set for Friday 
and they were going to launch on Sunday, and you couldn't get the phone on either day. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense other than the fact they don't have a calendar app on Windows Phone. Do they not have one of these things? They go, oh, Easter. Close. No, they have a calendar. Then I don't know why they don't have this on their Outlook. I think this is old-fashioned thinking. Uh, I think Apple has changed consumers to expect that when a device comes out, uh, it's available online and in the stores. Maybe not all stores, but in the stores you expect Mm -hmm. on the day of. Uh, And you're going to go and you're going to line up or you're going to pre-order and do all of that. And that's not the way devices have been rolled out historically. I mean, for decades, devices really didn't have a release date. I remember when I was working at CNET early on, I was like, why don't we have a calendar of release dates? And they're like, well, because it really doesn't work that way. You know, things are released, kind of rolled out to manufacturers and then they get shipped and they show up to stores at different dates. You know, they don't really they don't really try to have it on a day. And Apple has changed all that. I mean, granted. You know, going back, we were talking before the show, going all the way back to Windows 95, there have been these big pushes of release dates. But it wasn't really the norm until Apple made it, especially with the iPhone, the big thing. Well, okay, maybe we can say Apple's to blame for the expectation that a store should be open on a launch day. But that is the expectation, especially because Microsoft and Nokia both. I mean, this is a huge push. They had a big concert in New York City on Friday night. Nicki Minaj, who's a very popular singer right now, was performing in order to help promote the Lumia 900 um, even today, uh, Microsoft is sponsoring f- uh, what they call free time machines. It's in New York and San Francisco and Chicago are actual physical kiosks um, with people, representatives for the companies, offering freebies for meals, personal shoppers, uh, dog walkers, kind of like personal concierge stuff. The whole idea is to promote the fact that a Windows phone would be all of this for you if you just had one. There's actually more information at freetimemachine.com if you don't live in either of those three cities. But they're obviously trying to drum up a lot of interest and excitement. It just seems very, very curious that, yeah, okay, maybe uh, release dates, specific physical going into the store and lining up is not as important for a company like Microsoft. But don't put it on Easter Sunday. Yeah. well, And I've noticed in doing the week ahead for, for This Week in Tech that often AT&T releases things on Sunday. So again, it may just be one of those things like, oh yeah, slotted in on the Sunday, but they didn't pay attention or somebody missed the fact that it was yeah. a holiday Sunday. Right. Because Sunday's always a holiday. Sure. Most people don't work on Sunday. as Some people do. But that's an extra holiday Sunday when it's Easter Sunday. You got to yeah. pay attention to that. I, I, I think it's just a little bit tone deaf to this idea that, hey, phones, as people in the chat room have pointed out, phones are now like like movies and game consoles and other things that we have historically said, oh, yeah, there's a big day, a release day, and Apple has made phones like that now. Yeah, but Apple had some, like, has an advantage in the fact they control the retail channel. They can yeah. be like, look, we're going to open on Sunday. We don't care it's a holiday. We're going to be open this time and date sure, right. every day. It doesn't matter. And the thing is with Nokia, they had so much work to get into the U.S. market back. They paired up with AT&T. They have this monstrous new phone. And AT&T put a lot of money into the promotion, which still makes it more confusing. Even if they were going to promote this as this thing, and they're like, oh, by the way, we kind of made a mistake. It seems like they could have easily said to somebody, we have to fix this. Either we launch it on a Saturday, or we have to tell people to open up the store on Sunday. Well, how damaging is it really? I mean, we have a lot of people who are frustrated today, but are the majority of people not going to buy a Nokia Lumia 900 now because it came out on Sunday? I think the frustration will be at, at just at and I think their their budget for this marketing was something like $190 million or something just to get this thing promoted. And then I guess well, people who are upset on Sunday can go out today. But it just seems like... This I don't, is, I don't this think is, they're going to lose Windows Phone fans. If you like Windows Phone, you'd be like, yeah, that's the phone. Yeah, this, this will blow over. I mean, what's important now is how well will the Lumia 900 continue to sell? There are reports of some connectivity issues from people who did end up buying the phone. Phone Arena had a workaround for some people who said, basically, my data isn't working. I had to go back to the AT&T store, one of the ones that was open, to figure out what was going on. And they didn't know it was happening either. Um, it, it involved a master reset, removing the SIM card and kind of rebooting the phone. So it seems to be a fluke issue that, that will be resolved but yeah, going forward, Easter Sunday, forget about that. It's you know, are they going to stay at the top spot on Amazon, for example? You know, is the word going to get out that this is a great phone and you want it, even yeah. when it's not fifty dollars anymore? Even when they can't continue to spend one hundred ninety million dollars to promote it, I right? Mean, that ought to exactly. get you to the top spot for a day. How long it stays there depends on how good the phone is, and exactly. we've talked about that in the past. Let's take a quick break and thank our sponsor, Gazelle. We know you already have, or maybe you want. 
uh, the new iPad or the latest iPhone or a brand new Android smartphone. How do you help pay for those upgrades? Maybe you want to get the Nokia Lumia 900. Now's a great time to sell your used iPhone, iPad, iPod, Mac, or smartphone to Gazelle and get some cash to trade up. Go to gazelle.com. Get the best offer for those devices uh, because gadgets lose value over time. They don't get more expensive. I mean, you have to hold on to them for like 50, 100 years. Then they're antiques. But you don't want to wait that long. You need the money now. So don't wait. Go to Gazelle. That's G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot com to see what your gadget's worth. Get a risk-free offer. Gazelle locks in that quote for 30 days. I used that when I sold my iPad. I, I, I locked in the quote. And I took that 30-day period to make sure I got my new iPad before I sent my old one away. Uh, and Gazelle would love to buy your iPhones, your iPads, your iPods, your MacBooks, anything you're no longer using like that. Uh, it's a great way to get cash to put towards the latest devices. Now, quotes vary by model, so be sure to enter the correct model on the website. But once you tell them, this is the, the mobile device I've got, uh, this is the condition it's in, these are the cables I have, they'll give you a quote uh, and you'll get some cash uh, at minimum, we know Gazelle's helping gadgets find new homes. It's a good way of reusing things. Remember, just like when you drive a car off a lot, gadgets don't get more expensive over time. They don't get more valuable. Uh, so find out what your gadget's worth. Take a minute. Go to gazelle.com. Do it now because the sooner you do, the more money your gadgets will be worth. Check it out. Gazelle.com. Don't just sell it. Gazelle it. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com. We thank them for their support of Tech News Today. Onward into AT&T's iPhone unlock process, which also began on Easter Sunday. They just like to do things on Sunday, I guess. I don't know why. <laughs> but starting yesterday, AT&T began unlocking iPhones. Uh, people seem pretty excited about it. It helps you with switching to postpaid if you want to do a, a postpaid program where you just put in a prepaid SIM card in there. Uh, it helps you when you're traveling if you want to use a, a foreign carrier to save some money on roaming charges. And if you qualify, which means you're out of contract and you've paid off uh, the phone. You can go into a store, or better yet, just go into AT and T Chat at their website, att.com, and get the process started. The only information you need is the IMEI number. So if you're in an iPhone, you go to Settings, General, and About. You get your IMEI number. Uh, then you tell in Chat what the IMEI is. They check to make sure you qualify for an unlocking. They send it to Apple. Apple uh, processes it, and within 72 hours, Apple sends you a code. You then attach your phone. Back up, restore the phone with the code. You get a, a message saying, congratulations, your iPhone is unlocked. And then you can use it on other carriers. Pretty easy. Yeah, and almost surprising that AT&T would allow this. Well, it's it's not surprising to me that they will, should allow it because once you're out of contract, they should, right? Yeah. You shouldn't be locked in once you've actually right. fulfilled the terms of your contract. But AT&T doesn't think that way. But they didn't do it before. Yeah. Why, what changed their mind? Are they under enough like strain that they think with the iPhone 4S and the iPads out there, they're like, look, we kind of need to free up space. And if these phones are off our network, maybe we can do something with that. I don't know how many iPhone 3Gs or iPhone 4s they have that are out of contract already. But I'm thinking that's the only real reason why you would ever want to do this to get people off your network is to go we have a huge strain we don't have enough bandwidth for all you guys yeah but hey angry at&t users that hate us go somewhere else, go somewhere else. yeah we'll maybe make it easy for you well since apple handles the processing maybe the administration of unlocking these phones is easier than the administration of turning on international things mm -hmm. and or having people say well i've got a locked phone and i want to switch to a different carrier, so I'm going to leave AT&T. In this case, they may keep AT&T or they may switch to a Go phone, which, you know, they could get a SIM card for and use the iPhone with a Go phone. Is that possible? Yeah, that's possible. I'm not sure if the data plans I mean, I are think compatible. You can do some, I, think, I think you can do data. You can't do yeah. voice, I think, with the Go phone stuff. Okay. I've looked into that. But I, I think the other thing that makes this easier is the fact that it works with iTunes. It has a software component yeah. built in. You don't have that with, like, a lot of other phones. That there, There's recommended software, but iPhone users are really used to using iTunes just to go, okay, i got to update my, my operating system. I've got to sync my stuff. Oh, now I can unlock it. It's all right, kind of right there. Yeah. Uh, this, this works for, for multiple iPhones. So if you want to check it out, uh, go. we'll have links in the show notes at twit.tv slash TNT or, or just go to att.com. Bad news for Sony employees. More layoffs. Getting a lot of layoff news these days. Feel like, feels like the early 2000s again. Uh, the Nikkei newspaper in Japan reporting on Monday that Sony will axe 10,000 jobs. It's around 6% of its global workforce. Uh, Sony has been in the red for four years since they did a, a big layoff of around 16,000 people four years ago. And as of the end of March 2011, Sony had 168,200 employees. So investors will be paying very close attention, not that they weren't already, to what Kaz Hirai says when he gives a briefing on Thursday. Nikkei also said that half of the latest round of job cuts would come from consolidating the firm's chemicals and small and mid-size LCD operations. 
which is, I think, what most investors want to see. It's the TV business that's been dragging down Sony the most, and they want to see Sony backing off of that. That would indicate that they are. Sony may also ask its seven executive directors who served through the fiscal year to end of March, including Howard Stringer, who stepped down as CEO, is now the chairman, to return their bonuses. That's huge. That'd be a good thing for morale. I mean, if, if your top guys are willing to go, yeah, we know that our company's really hurt, and we're going to dump 10,000 of you. The least we can do is give back some of this money that we've got. Already spent it on jets. You're going to have to give back that jet. I just, Sorry. I, I would hope it would help morale because it's got to balance the, the huge loss of 10,000 people. Yeah. I, I, what, is, what this means for you is uh, the Sony TV line is likely to change. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, not that they're going to stop making TVs, but you're going to see differences there. And they're going to double down on other parts of the business and maybe not put out as many products. I believe with the restructuring that Horizon is actually in charge of the television unit at this Directly, point. Directly, that's yeah, right. So yeah. now, I mean, it, I could see a lot of changes happening there. And again, they did that experiment with that PlayStation uh, television with the double 3D kind of thing. I, I would assume that's where they're going to be going because that's that's been Sony's bread and butter. That's the thing that's been making them a lot of money. A lot of integration with the PlayStation and their televisions directly. Uh, if they're going to move towards a higher profit margin for televisions, because the televisions aren't making them any money. If you stick a PlayStation in there, maybe they got something. But I mean, that's that's all wild speculation. On I think Thursday is the new corporate strategy meeting for uh, Harai. I'd like to see closer integration of the different departments of Sony, not because I give a darn about how they run their business, but because I want to see Sony products have that integration. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to have them. Com you know, be compatible not with the, just with each other, but with Sony Pictures and Sony Television, and you know all the different arms of the company. They just they don't talk to each other, and I, I like this idea that Kazurai might get that to change. Finally, uh, the AP's May Anderson has a report today suggesting that iPad may be risking turning into a generic term, a la Kleenex or Xerox or Walkman. Uh, now. The, the idea with trademarks is you, you vigorously defend them and they don't you don't lose the ability to use them. Aspirin is one of the only examples we were thinking of where someone has actually lost. lost that used to yeah. be a brand name the term, and it is now a generic term. You hear the generic side is the, is the term, yeah. what happens to your trademark term. And a lot of people, generic does have a legal meaning, but what, what this is being used as is generic as in, this is what we just call it right. colloquially. Like Kleenex right. for facial tissue. Band-Aids. But That's... Kleenex is still our Band-Aid, but they're both still legitimate trademarks. Mm -hmm. They haven't been lost. This is silly. You guys, yeah. Kleenex is like, it's a brand name for, you know, tissues where you blow your nose with. We're talking about an iPad being used to describe an Android tablet or well, a Windows tablet. They're basically saying a, that we'll call all tablets iPads. That's because that stupid. Just, and no one's doing that. The well, only reason I think. How do you that, know? I, the only reason I think people are confused is because. People just have more iPads right now, so they're calling their iPads iPads. I, that's they're what not I was mistaking gonna... them with other tablets. That's, you, you made my point, exactly, which is I don't think it's so much that people are calling all tablets iPads. I just don't think most it's people just, see other everyone tablets. everyone has one. But that could lead to people identifying that name with the form factor, couldn't it? I mean, that's how Kleenex happens. It's like every maybe, facial tissue box out there is Kleenex, and you start calling it Kleenex. I mean, Jason, maybe your daughter would see a tablet and say iPad because she's heard the name iPad. But no, right. I don't think adults are confused. I'm sorry, I don't. I think some might be. Okay. I'm just thinking. But some people are confused about a lot of things. There was this okay. e-reader e study where people like the 62% had a Kindle, but 9% didn't know what they had. They just said, don't know. They answered they had an e-reader, but they don't even know what it is. So the thing is, I don't know if these people that are... are thinking that whatever tablet is an iPad, they're just being gifted these items, and they're just like, yeah, it's an iPad. Yeah, but they know iPad. That's such an iconic But then nobody term. uses tablet PC, I think, as a term for these things. No. I doubt that the HP tablets that are coming out or the Windows 8 tablets will be called iPads. Well, they all call the Samsung tablets iPads, but that's because Samsung's infringement, infringing on the design. They look extraordinarily like no, them. A little bit. Sort of kidding. I'll actually wait for the courts to decide whether I'm kidding or not. <laughs> uh, the side note here, Apple has also been downgraded. Their stock has been downgraded. <gasps> it's over. <laughs> from, it's over. From Doomsday. buy to neutral by BTIG research analyst Walter Pychik, citing postpaid phones. So, so the idea that people want to do a pay-as-you-go, uh, and the iPhone doesn't really make that easy. Uh, an expected iPhone price cut. He says iPhone can't. They, Apple can't keep charging the carriers six hundred dollars for these things when they're selling them for one ninety nine. That's got to end. And a lack of a revolutionary product this year. They had a resolutionary product, mm, but not a revolutionary. That's a little different. Product. Well, you know, they're not mutually exclusive necessarily. Well, but it was not, it was the new iPad. So he's saying they haven't 
entered a new product category. He doesn't expect us to see an Apple television this year or any other new product what category. What about the little mini pad? Not going to happen, I guess. Not, I guess that's not, not, not revolutionary enough for him. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> what do you want from He's playing the odds. I mean, what are the odds they can do this every year? They're like, hey, we've got this new, new amazing product. And yeah, it's going to keep the price of this. This will be the same price all the time. Even the supply chain is changing the way it is all the time. It's, it's just like, theoretically, it's like if you, if you had a baseball, uh, a batter that hits and he's got a hit every single time. You're not going to say that, yeah, the next time he's up, he's going to get a hit. You're like, well, maybe he's due. Yeah, well, he's the he's one analyst. He's like, look, I need to, I need to fight these, these Shaw Woos out there <laughs> who get all the attention. I've, I, I'm going to make a name for myself and predict Apple stock goes down. And if you're and you right. Know what? Yeah, if he's right, he's a genius. If he's not right, nobody remembers him. Walter P-I-E-C-Y-K. Remember that name. Remember, Good luck, Walter. Remember that man. Let's We're on light you. the news feeds. RIM tried their best to make a lot of news last week, but uh, nobody noticed until today, apparently. Bloomberg Businessweek reports that during an interview on Thursday last week, April 5th, Senior Vice President of BlackBerry Security Scott Totsky said RIM's share of the government market is probably increasing, and that could be the thing that saves RIM. Also last week, VP of Developer Relations Alex Saunders announced on Twitter that RIM would remove the ability to sideload apps to the BlackBerry playbook in order to prevent piracy. Saunders claims that there are developers who refuse to work with RIM until sideloading support is removed. An NTech and the Tech Report both have details on the first motherboards with Ivy Bridge compatible Panther Point chipset. So, you finally have native uh, USB 3.0 support, although the motherboards they looked at only had two ports. Motherboards will also bring full compliance with PCI 3 3.0, as well as compatibility with DDR3L. That's a low voltage version of DDR3. The motherboards are also backwards compatible with Sandy Bridge processors. However, if you want to wait, an OnTech says to expect Ivy Bridge processors processors in about three weeks. Lenovo showed off its new iPad, I mean Idea Tab, S2109, <laughs> via a YouTube video, the ICS Power Tablet has a 9.7 inch screen, is 8.99 millimeters thin, and Lenovo crammed in four speakers in this thing. The Idea Tab also has a front-facing camera, it's a 1.3 megapixel, but there's no rear camera. Lenovo claims 10 hours of battery life, and when can you get it and how much will it cost? No idea, because Lenovo didn't put that in the video. <laughs> After a teenager sold his kidney on the black market to raise money to buy gadgets like the iPad, the actual, not the generic name. Five people were arrested in China for illegal organ trading and causing intentional injury. The five-person group made about $35,000 for the transplant. The teenager received approximately 3000 of that amount. Surgery was performed last year, and the teenager is now suffering renal failure. So it's a very sad story. Well, my goodness. Uh, all right, moving on. The times, they are changing because New York City is replacing payphones with touchscreen internet-enabled kiosks that will give you local data for free. 250 of them. 32-inch screens will be installed with the help of a company called Smart City 24-7. In related news, AT&T is selling its Yellow Pages business unit to Cerberus Capital Management for $950 million. Not quite a billion, but close. But AT&T will retain a 47% interest in the new holding company. According to blogger Brian Madden, OnLive reworked its system, so its offering of Windows Desktop and Office on iPad no longer runs into issues with Microsoft's Windows 7 license. Instead of running on Windows 7, the modified online service is based on Windows Server 2008 R2. The server desktop can be modified to appear and act like a Windows 7 desktop. The change was first noticed by the folks over at OnLiveFans.com. Uh, still going to be some people upset, but they're definitely trying to engineer around it. That's good. Uh, Google told AdAge that it will go buy a whole bunch of generic top-level domains related to its trademark terms. Remember, you can create your own top-level domain like .com or .org now, except those are taken. Uh, Google didn't specify which top-level domains it would pick up, but it's a safe bet we'll see .google, probably .youtube, sometime in the near future. Google did not mention how it plans to use the new domains, though. More Google news. The company released a new Android emulator today, which includes GPU support as well as OpenGL ES 2.0 support. Google says it'll now be possible to use any tethered Android device to provide inputs for sensors and multi-touch. Bluetooth and NFC emulation both coming soon. Where's my spectrum? Now, Daddy, children, my spectrum? we only have a limited amount of spectrum, so you all have to share, yeah, okay? Tom's touching my spectrum. All right, T-Mobile, Leap Wireless, relax. And two other joint ventures will swap spectrum in a number of markets 
to improve coverage for all. Okay, The deal will also allow for T-Mobile and Leap to build out their LTE networks. T-Mobile was able to make these swaps because it's gaining some spectrum from that whole failed AT&T merger. Remember that? All right. Enough of the spectrum crunch. Let's talk robots, pirates, and randomizer. Randomizer. The United States Navy plans to use robot helicopters, helicopter drones, essentially. They're fire scout drones, uh, to go after pirates. Pirates, not a joking matter anymore, off the coast of Africa. Right. Uh, Somali pirates, especially. These are ship-faring pirates. This is not like co copyright pirates. Right. For those well, of you. Well, maybe, did yeah, we read all the way? Take, yeah, no, you're right. They I guess take they could, hostages they could and they have guns. On a, they could do that on a boat, too, I guess. <laughs> I don't. So this is not the Navy supporting SOPA. No. <laughs> the Fire Scout drones would bounce millions of laser pulses off distant objects to create a 3D radar image of any boats on the high seas. Uh, and then using uh, LIDAR, or LADAR, uh, their new software could automatically compare the 3D images to pirate boat profiles on record. So it's kind of like mashing or matching the hashtags of pirated downloads, except for actual pirates on boats. And what's, what's the, what are these military drones going to do when they get on the pirates? Are they gonna well, they go out and they, they search. And then when they find it, they let the destroyer know, and then the destroyer probably goes after it. That's my guess. I love these drones. Pirates are mean. Yeah. Stop, stop you know? the actual boat pirates. Mm -hmm. Yes. For sure. That's a safe statement. I'm going to agree with that. Let's check the calendar. <laughs> Microsoft says that Windows Vista will have security updates until April... 2017. Warranty claims won't be covered, but otherwise, you'll have some software security patches for a while now. The 41 megapixel Nokia 808 Pure View, remember that that uh, phone with the craziest megapixel count ever? It's up for pre order in Italia. It's expected to launch in May for about 600 euros or 780 US. Sim free, Symbian Bell powered device. Will you get one? No. I'm going to get six. Seems high. I like really the, high. I like, you know, this is not just pix pixel bloat. Like, they're actually using the 41 megapixels for a good purpose, but it, I, I'm not really a photo guy, so probably not. Yeah. Jack Tramiel, who's Commodore 64, widely considered the best selling personal computer in history, has died. He died on Sunday at age 83. He also left Commodore in 1984, acquired Atari from Warner Communications, spun it from a console maker into a PC manufacturer. Quite a legend, quite a pioneer, and he will be missed. Commodore 64, part of the reason that I got into computers. TI-99 was my first one, but Commodore 64 is the one where I really learned to program and use computers. So, yeah, uh, sad to see the passing of Jack Tramiel. Let's check what's incoming. Incoming message. We got a voicemail from George uh, responding to our discussions of the change of the Mass Effect 3 endings. Hi, guys. This is George from Ohio. Um, I was just watching Tech News Today today, and we were going over the uh, Mass Effect 3 ending thing, and uh, this actually isn't the first time this happened. Fallout 3, people despised the ending so much that Bethesda went back and actually released a new DLC called Broken Steel that not only changed the ending, but changed what you could do after you finish the game. So, love the show. Bye. All of this has happened before. All of it will happen again. 2008. When Complain Bethesda did loudly that. to yeah. get what you want. <laughs> exactly. Although Ma Mass Effect, they're not actually changing the ending. They're expanding it. Yeah, right. they're clarifying yeah. the ending. Yeah, it's more information. Really interesting. All right, uh, finish up with an email from uh, John in Glen Allen, Virginia, who says, not Glen and John Allen, Virginia, says, I'd like to share a thought about an application uh, for Google Glasses. Uh, this is Project Glass from Google. I recently did an eight-year stint volunteering for a nonprofit that provided day care for seniors with Alzheimer's, it would seem to me that Google Glasses married with facial recognition software would be a great benefit to people with memory disabilities. Name and relationship prompting would be a huge benefit to a memory disabled person, as well as such basic reminders of date, year, time of day, and where they are. It's April 9th, 2012. The person looking at you is your son, Bob. You're in Bob's house, which is in the city of, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. Maybe the current generation of seniors might not be able to adapt to the technology, but people of the TNT Cruise generation would probably adapt well to Google Glasses prompts should they need them as they age. Such a good point. I don't, I, you know, I wonder if it would be hard to adapt current sufferers of Alzheimer's to it. Maybe it would. Maybe it wouldn't. It, it seems like it wouldn't. Your, your technology literacy shouldn't matter. It's a, if you see something popping up in front of you that you'd benefit from that. I think it's more of just maybe people of an older generation 
would not get used to reading something in glasses, period. Yeah, maybe, Whether it's a maybe. reminder or anything else. Yeah. Um, you, I need these glasses soon. <laughs> yeah, it's me too. Not because I'm getting Alzheimer's per se, but I just, yeah. You're, I need these glasses to be the answer gets... for when I say, what's that word yeah. for? And it just needs to know. Right. Then it would be the most perfect product ever. But a great uh, great use of this, uh, John. I, would, I absolutely wish this had been around when my grandma uh, had Alzheimer's. Yeah. The other thing is if you could find out on when it's early onset and they get used to it then yeah, at that point. So instead of really it just being like, oh, it's too, it's too late, you can actually bring it in early enough that, oh, yeah, I got used to this thing up here. I mean, even even uh, uh, non-Alzheimer's sufferers, you just forget stuff. Uh, I know yeah. my grandma had to be reminded, you know, it was Sunday or it yeah. was Monday and this is the kind of weather and, you know, the next holidays, 4th of July, that sort of thing. It's sure. just, that can be very helpful. All right, that's it for this edition of Tech News Today. You can find our subreddit, technewstoday.reddit.com, if you'd like to tell us what you would like to hear us talk about today. For instance, uh, if you want to vote something up, you don't even have to submit a story. You just vote it up or down. Or if you do uh, want to vote, want to submit, you can submit the story itself, and we take a look at that when we decide what to talk about. Technewstoday.reddit.com. That's it for us. You can find us on the web, twit.tv slash TNT. You can email us. Our email address is TNT at twit.tv. And you can give us a call. Our phone number is 260-TNT-SHOW. Molly Wood from CNET.com joins us tomorrow. We'll see you then.